Buenas tardes a todos, bienvenidos. Eh, hoy estamos acá para tener varias charlas, ahora en un ratito vemos la, la agenda. Simplemente quería recordarles antes de iniciar que esta es una charla que se va a dar íntegra en inglés. Eh, sí, también que hoy puede seguirla por completo. Y, y bueno, vamos a estar hablando de, de, de varias cosas. La... So it's going to be reflections on user experience design, three complementing views. That's the initial subtitle of what we're going to do today. And this is a headache. Well, let's go with this. Okay, so it begins with a big thank you, and uh, it's uh, overwhelming in a way to be up here in this uh, house of studies. So let's begin with thanking Kevin Richardson, uh, NVIDIA Technologies, for letting him be here and sharing this uh, talk. Uh, also, Infragistics, that was responsible of the, the initial relationships that brought us here. Uh, naturally, to FAO, to this School of Architecture, Design and Urbanism. Marcelo Danza, the Dean, uh, who was involved in all of this and, and helped us uh, structure this event. The Institute, Institute of Theory and Urbanism, which brings us here also along the side of the Department of Information, uh, Geographical Information and Communication, Rodrigo Galvan as a representative of that, uh, Martin Loskin, who uh, was uh, the nexus with Kevin too, and then naturally the areas of culture, of FADU, Comunicación, Patio, que difundió la, la noticia, uh, the Chamber of Design, uh, Más Mujeres en UX, who also amplified the news, Ixda Montevideo, who has long been an actor of uh, UX in Uruguay, and every single one of you. I didn't want to uh, forget anybody, so that's the reason why I was reading it. So for the agenda, we'll start with what's happening in UX in Uruguay, and this is the genesis, a little bit of the state today, and the future of it. Then the context of digital territories, which is a uh, topic that the Institute addresses, uh, the department, and finally 13 lessons over 31 years. That's the talk that Kevin is going to share with all of us. Finally, a little bit of Q&A and networking. Please interrupt me uh, for any question you have. So, who's Kevin? Uh, he has a, uh, there he is, come up whenever you want. Um, he's an award-winning user experience professional with a PhD in cognitive psychology and more than 30 years of consulting and in-house UX, UX experience. Outside of work, uh, and this uh, frightens me, Kevin tempts fate, risks long-term disability and tests his wife's patience by racing motorcycles. That's a lot to say. What about this uh, bold, all-known guy from this house? I'm a director uh, of user experience, a mentor, a lecturer, a community builder, a juror, and a speaker. That's as succinct as I could have it. Whoa, what happened over there? So let's start with uh, the state of UX in Uruguay. This. Think about the genesis, the state, and the future. There it goes. So for the genesis, we're in the School of Architecture. There's a timeline here where on the top track you'll see things that have to do with the University of the Republic, and below the line, some things that happen outside of it. In 1915, that's a long time ago, uh, this School of Architecture uh, 
split itself from what was known as the University of Mathematics. And it was not until 1988 that we had the first dedicated uh, studies and the first cohort of uh, the Centro de Diseño Industrial, uh, Center of Industrial Design, which had the uh, help of the Italian government, and those were the first generations of academically uh, taught designers uh, outside of the uh, School of Architecture. After that, uh, oops. Then in 1996, graphic design uh, made its way to uh, the private universities uh, and the place that ORT takes. In 2001, we started in this context and in this house talking about the plan for the um, degree on visual communications. Finally, in 2005, it took place and the first cohort uh, started their training. 2007, uh, there was a, uh, it became uh, a full degree and, and with full recognition, graphic design and industrial design in the uh, private universities. 2008, as a result of part of that, uh, the Chamber of Design, Uruguayan Chamber of Design, started its activities and was helping us uh, uh, bring awareness of this uh, talk uh, today during this week's. And uh, in 2009, uh, the industri industrial design, previously CDI over there, turned a university uh, matter and was brought into this house and uh, from then on we uh, share paths. By that time when you said UX, the question was you what? Nobody knew uh, anything about it. 2012, and there's uh, a few members or uh, old friends of IXDA over here, that's when it began its activities in Montevideo. And it started with very few people, and it continued to grow along the years. We'll see a little bit of that as we continue. 2015, the change, uh, there was a change for this school which was significant. Now design was part of the, their name, uh, and it became the School of Architecture, Design and Urbanism, which it was not that way before. So, a little bit of room for design to happen within these walls. And um, at the same time, UX demand ramps up. So there's a lot more uh, room for designers to play the role in whatever had to uh, do with user experience. 2018, a lot closer in time. Uh, I remember this pretty clearly. We went to ILA in Rio Interaction Latin America as part of the context of IXDA. Uh, there were a couple of uh, ladies that were promoting their recently created uh, community in Chile, and uh, we quickly adopted that idea, uh, and Julia and Antonella and somebody else started running the local embassy and we had the first state of UX survey uh, launched, and we learned a lot of what was happening in the, in the local uh, concert. So 70 people took place on that. We learned about their needs, about their uh, intentions, about their work, about their salaries, lots of things. And with that, uh, we spent a little bit of time uh, in conversations with the dean of this school, and a few months later, uh, we finally arrived with the first uh, course uh, in the context of continuous education uh, in 2020, just as the pandemic was hitting. And today, we're now on March 16, we're about to start the fifth edition of it. Finally, uh, in the private sector, then, whoops, but 
Thank you. Gracias. Um, there's now a diploma that is starting to take place uh, from this year on. So about the state, and uh, Martin was asking this question as soon as I arrived, is, well, what's, what's the story now? How, how does it look? You've been running a few uh, surveys, but none was shared about it. So let's, let's take a look. It's a growing community and a growing practice too. And from that survey that we had in 2018 with 70 participants, this year we had 159. That's uh, more than double. And the other interesting aspect of that is that we're now a lot more balanced and there's a very tiny gap between the number of female and male that are part of this discipline with an astonishing 51-49% uh, relationship. It's a young gang. Uh, most of the people that work in this practice uh, are between their 26 and 35. And yes, you're laughing, we're over here in the over 45 section. Yes, for sure, I'm part of that too. Um, but that paints a picture of how do we spread across uh, our discipline. A diversely prepared group with people that have barely completed their uh, high school uh, trainings from to technical people that are formed in UTU uh, to folks that, as myself, are uh, in the sphere of those that never finished uh, university. Most of the people, and this is good news, have completed their university trainings, have postgraduate studies, master's degrees, and uh, yes, Kevin, you're alone here. Uh, there's no doctorate degrees uh, that we know of, at least from this participants. We come from, oops. Let's see, no, not this. We come from several fields. Most of us arrived to UX from graphic design as I think this, this is no, no news, no surprises here. Um, but then, in the second place, industrial design takes a, a supporting role in uh, sharing uh, ways of learning, uh, designing, thinking of design, and so on. And then we spread through uh, a significant number of alternative uh, fields that are all connected. We're trained some of us in content design, service design, information architecture, qualitative research, quantitative research, prototyping tools, usability concepts, product design, design thinking techniques being the most uh, shared knowledge that we all have. Um, again, no surprises here, but it's good to have a sense of what are we prepared on. An eager to learn uh, via multiple channels. We take hybrid trainings, we have in-company trainings, some of us uh, were love in-person trainings, although not many of us join them. Uh, some people go for international certifications, workshops, conferences, meetups and talks, online trainings, and the most popular is we go on our own and we read books, we check on blogs, we hit YouTube videos and try to learn something from there. That's a preferred way. Uh, we've held uh, interaction design for positions for most of us, or most of the, this sample, one to three years. It's a very junior community, I would say, to some extent. Less than a year, this is growing. Uh, first time we did this in 2018, these were not the numbers. Well, there were less people that were in this uh, track. Four to seven years, and there's a, a few folks that's, that have been around for a while. And we work at local companies for 47.8% of the cases. And then in a spread of foreign companies that might have a local presence or not, and then some of us uh, work in multiple companies or are freelancers or consultants or uh, 
those sorts of combinations. We're hired as full-time workers in most of the cases, 66% of us. 17% of us are freelancers or contractors. 6.9 entrepreneurs or owners. And 5% of us part-time workers. Our compensations are generally happening in the form or shape of salaries. And 34% have a, well, hand off as an invoice or have a contract and go on their own. A few go with a, a blend of salary and contract. And how much do we perceive? I guess that this is one of the most interesting ones for uh, most of the people that are here. There's, there's a wide range of uh, salaries that go from less than uh, 50,000 pesos, uh, liquidos en la mano, which uh, maps to gross yearly uh, 26K in US dollars, all the way to uh, around 104K a year, um, which is more than 200,000 pesos en la mano a month. Um, the range more or less maps with the seniority that we were taking a look uh, in a previous slide. And the industries that hire the most, uh, again, no surprises over here, are software and technology, uh, fintech, banking, startups, and consulting. Those being uh, less of a higher option. Our roles within these companies, um, it varies, but it's uh, mostly individual contributors for 62% of the cases. So we work on our own, we work designing, we do the work. In 25% of the cases, it's management role, either a line manager or a senior manager or a director, any, any flavor of management. And uh, there's a small percentage that has a double hat. It's a, this is a um, hands-on manager, right? It, uh, they have people in charge, but also they do the work. They uh, sit and design and think about design and all of this. How do we work? Half and half, I would say. 47% uh, of us have a hybrid model and sometimes go to the office, sometimes not. 46% work at home or decidedly in a remotely, remote way, and a bare 8% go to the office. This is a thing of the past, it looks like. What do we read? And this is a collection of uh, books that the participants have shared with us, going from uh, things that have been published a long time ago to very recent titles from uh, local titles to uh, global titles to from specifics on design to more philosophical approaches. It's a nice and, and, and appealing blend. And one of the things to say about this is that I don't think that we have, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that we have a library in which we can find all of these titles together if we want to check on them or just take them home or read them or anything like that. Unless we buy them, we do not have access. We also listen to lots of podcasts, which map pretty much to the same approach. Some of them are very specific, some others are more philosophical, some of them are very local, some are in English, some are in Spanish, a little bit of everything. We follow different people, uh, and you might find a few familiar pa uh, uh, faces, but maybe the most uh, fun thing that I got as a, that we got as an answer is who would you uh, suggest to follow? And one of the participants reply, "Follow your heart." That's why it's over there, uh, top left. Other sources of information: uh, we consume information or news around uh, our field of action mainly through LinkedIn, sometimes on Instagram, 
25% of the cases via newsletters and sometimes over TikTok. But the more surprising thing is that 20.8% of the participants still say that they are missing out, that they feel they're missing out, that they do not know of what's happening in the local scenery. Uh, we've, oops, we've taken courses in each of these uh, places. Something's wrong with this slide. Yeah, we've completed trainings in these places and more. And that's how we taught ourselves. And when asking the participants, what, what do you think that Uruguay needs to become a more active participant, uh, um, play a, a significant role in this uh, discipline, it's more remote opportunities, more education options, better communication, more meetups, and this is something that we've struggled with during the last two, three years, because of the obvious reasons, right? Uh, a solid design career focused on digital products, more visibility, stronger communities, better English. Well, apparently we do not have that problem today. You're, if you all are following, we're okay. A university degree that uh, we still don't have or is about to start in the uh, private uh, sector. More networking, communicating more and better between us. Uh, case sharing, how do we share what we've learned? How do we share what the cases that we see? How do we solve different things? More people, well, uh, I cannot help on that. I already have a couple of teenagers. I want to bring more people into this country. Better salaries, more publishing, and better professionals. We've nurtured and known about multiple communities. And in some cases, they have a local presence. Some others, they don't. Uh, so here's a, a very good opportunity uh, and, and something that we need to learn of. Uh, as early as 2018, Mahmoud Mujeres in UX did not exist. That's four years ago. And it's now the most relevant community that has not only ramped up on their presence, but brought lots of different topics to the table, discussions that uh, are really interesting and that appeal both to people that are starting their careers as well as those that are more into leadership. We uh, do have an ongoing relationship with IXDA, with IDF, sorry. Some, whoops. Please bear with me. Not the best idea to do this this way. It's lots of clicks. There we go. Okay. IDF is a constant source for consultancy. Uh, ADP list, very new. Uh, a year ago it started or so, but it's already uh, having an impact. And UXPA, not that frequent, uh, but we still have some nexus with them. What's in the future of uh, UX in Uruguay? Or how does it look? This is a very personal approach and has nothing to do with the results of the of the survey, uh, this was not part of what we were asking. But I think that in the field of education, we need to double down on the offer and have more uh, types of offer. Uh, we need to build a technical library, as we were saying, that that would be a really great. Extend the scope of the practice, collaborate across disciplines and schools, highlight the inherent, the inherent value of interdiscipline. And for that, uh, there's a, uh, a thing to, to begin with highlighting. We, as, as we saw, we do not arrive from the same, uh, from the same background. Uh, we study different things when we arrive to UX. And 
when we see how many of us arrived uh, from, from those different backgrounds, most of us are arriving from graphic design alone. So it would be really good to bring a little bit of diversity to that and have more folks coming from psychology, from sociology, from humanities, from uh, even engineering, all sorts of different places that uh, can contribute to a wider, better uh, view of our practice. Strengthen the liaisons between academy and industry, socialize this area of knowledge so that we're not asked again, UX what? And that's, there's many areas where uh, people still don't know what, what do we do or what do we uh, work on or how does that look? Um, and work finally on career ladders so that we have a clear understanding on what are our chances in our immediate futures and how do we continue to form ourselves. In terms of communities, there's a lot to do too. Uh, learn from and actively integrate the female power they've been teaching us. Uh, and that's something to continue, but also to make room for. Um, nurture communities. Communicate their work better. Capture regular snapshots of the state of the practice. And maybe not, uh, as we had in this case, four years in the middle that uh, we don't know what happened doing those. Uh, focus on design strategy, something to continue to develop, continue to identify and position design leadership. And finally, seek involvement in high visibility, high impact projects that include government. Uh, we do not have a story of, of or history of involvement uh, as uh, the academy in government solutions driven, UX driven. The other reason why we're all here uh, is because of the work of digital territories. And Rodrigo, you can help me whenever you want. But let's start by uh, sharing what the Department of Geographical Information and Communication does, which is to address the new forms of urbanity and notions of territory from a social cultural perspective. It promotes the development of geographic information systems and urban policies, management and planning in accordance with a society that encompasses diverse cultural narratives. And one of the ways in which it does that uh, is by blending digital territories and engaging forms of interaction. So the emergence of new technology challenges the current ways of approaching and analyzing reality. This department aims to map the different existing digital territories, their evolution, scope, and conflicts, and their ways of configuring and generating meaning for people. This objective will help us identify how it happens, both in global and local contexts. Understanding dis digital territories as design spaces, uh, we link visual communication and user experience to those. And through these disciplines, uh, there is analysis and a highlight of possible entry points, as well as an alternative uh, to taking ownership of those territories. And the way in which uh, this institute uh, works is by opening up different lines of research, amongst which we can find digital presence and citizen participation, the ecology of media from global to local perspectives, digital territory as a design space, which encompasses interaction design incidents and UX UI design as a digital liaison, video games and communication, encoding and decoding model articulation. In regards to the digital skin, what does it mean to uh, build an avatar, belong to it, and how, how do we signify it? Algorithms, technological changes and new di digital behaviors, interpretative communities, and within that, digital urban tribes in Uruguay. This is much of the 
uh, research program and the lines of research that are explored by uh, this department, which in short is a combination of the academy, technology, and society, and right in the middle, those digital territories. If you want to know more about this, you can scan this QR code and download the original PDF of digital ter territories together with uh, the lines of research. And if you want to uh, be part of any of this, you can reach out to Rodrigo or anybody else in the department. There's a lot of information in the uh, web of the of this school too. Thank you, and with this, I will leave it to you, Kevin.